Hello, my radar tropical weather expert, Dr. David Riglicki here. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about something very near and dear to my heart, the Riglicki cane. And I must warn you, I did not come up with that name, but I'll happily embrace it. But before we begin, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to hit that bell so you get notifications when we're making videos. And hey, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. So to begin, I'm gonna show you the first storm that I ever saw do this. This is Hurricane Hernan from 2008. And we're gonna be watching an animation here of Hernan going through its motions. This is satellite imagery of the infrared channel back in 2008. Now Hernan is gonna bubble, 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 and you're gonna see on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on one more time, and then you're gonna get the eye. Now I know that happened pretty quickly, but we're gonna go through that uh, one more time. So as you see convection here, it's gonna start bubbling, 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 and you're gonna get on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on one more time, and then you're gonna get the eye. Like I said, I know that happened pretty quickly, but is that convective pulsing, which is what really uh, characterizes these kinds of storms? So I know that went by really quickly. So we can slow this down into a little schematic. So when hurricane forecasters are looking for rapid intensification, classic rapid intensification, they're usually looking at this top row. And what they're looking for is something called the convective burst to wrap around the eye. So in any of your favorite rapid intensification hurricanes, Patricia, uh, Wilma, Katrina, usually saw something like this. Well, now what separates reglicocanes from the regular ones is there is this pulsing, is that you have this big pulse, and then it goes away, and then it pulses again. Now the time, the, the time horizons of this is that this pulsing usually happens on an order of four to eight hours, from, uh, from peak to trough to peak. This is usually happens in four hours. And you get a similar uh, evolution with classic storms, but they just look a little bit different. So when I first saw these storms, I, I was looking at them and, and maybe you saw it, but it was, there was like a regular periodicity or a regular, a regular frequency. These things were appearing just at a regular interval. So it took us a lot of time to figure out actually how do we figure out how, how intense or how frequent are these convective pulses happening. So what you're looking at here is all the area coverage of the storm of brightness temperatures from the infrared colder than minus 70 degrees Celsius. So we're just trying to figure out, like trying to measure how much this cloud field is expanding and contracting. But what was killing us was the diurnal signal. So in here you have the blue, that is all that is measuring this pulsing. But the orange is what's associated with the, the diurnal, which means day-to-day -day variation. And that's not what we want. So when we filtered it out, which took a lot of work, what you're left with is this green line. And what we're most interested in here is this time period right here. So what you have, and you can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. We had six pulses that we saw from Hurricane Hernan. And if you do a further analysis on this, these come out at four and a half hours. And that was the really big finding is that we were able to see, not only it was doing this pulsing, but able to quantify just how uh, often this pulsing was happening. So there's another thing we can do to try to break this down, and I'm not gonna lie to you, that there are a lot of moving parts here, but to try to break this down, I tried to highlight all the important components of what separates reglicocanes from regular hurricanes. Now we have at low levels, the original circulation here, but what also happens is that you have convection, that's what this green is here, this is all the precipitation that's coming in from the hurricane, it's usually localized in one spot, and you have these convective towers that extend all the way to the top of the storm. But what also happens is you have this secondary circulation and this storm is actually wobbling as it's going through this process. And what's, and what's uh, potentially the most important part is that when this convection, when this stuff comes up, it is, it is actually emitting what is called outflow, which is the flow at the top of the storm. And this blocks the environmental winds. 
So what's happening here is that initially the environment is pushing the storm over. And if your vertical wind profile of the environment looks like this, where it's really constant down at low levels, but then ramps up at upper levels, the hurricane can actually produce enough outflow to block this. And it reduces the shear and it allows the whole thing to pull itself back together. And that's what's really unique about this situation. So like I said, there's a lot of interesting stuff. There's a lot of complicated stuff here. So what I did to do a little bit more investigation was run a numerical weather prediction model to simulate some of this, because this allows you to get data at various spots which you wouldn't normally have from just observations. So what we're looking at here are upper level winds, uh, upper level winds from the numerical simulation. And we have it set from zero hours to 16. They're not consistent, but what I really want you to focus on here is this cyan cross. And what this cyan cross is, is where the winds from the hurricane have pushed back against the environment. So as we start at zero, see there's no hurricane up there, it's all easterly wind. But as the hurricane starts to create itself, it eventually creates what is uh, this protective bubble around the core of the storm here at around 53 hours. Now this, this uh, what we call the stagnation point, if you want a $5 word for what this is called. But you'll see it actually, as these pulses happen, they're actually pushing back against the environment. And that's really what's going on here, is that as this convection is pulsing, as this storm is wobbling, it's producing enough outflow to create this giant protective bubble around itself. So like I said, this is very complicated. So we have a little here a little schematic that goes through the different regions of what is going on as the hurricane starts to push back against the environment. So we have here is our convective pulse, and we have in these arrows here, this is the outflow. So this is actually what the hurricane is throwing out at upper levels. And right here is what we call the outflow front, which is where the winds of the environment and the outflow collide. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Due to some very interesting dynamics that go on at upper levels, the effects of this actually extend 1,000 kilometers away from the storm. So this is about three to 400 miles. So what we've got here is that we have the outflow of the storm, then it messes with the environment where the environment actually slows down and turns to the left, and then 1,000 kilometers away, 10 degrees of latitude or longitude away, that's when we return to what the winds would have been had the hurricane not been there. Now, as a, a fun little like bonus or Easter egg here, you know, so a lot of this, a lot of this was a lot of work, was me just looking at satellite imagery over and over and over again. And when I was really little, I really I wanted to be an astronomer, an astrophysicist. And I was always fascinated by what we're looking at here is the heliosphere. So the heliosphere is what this is the bubble that the sun creates around us as we go hurtling through space at however many million miles per hour. But the idea here is that you have these barriers as the sun is emitting what is called the solar wind. So we've we've actually figured out that the physics that allows this to happen in interstellar space is the same physics that's happening at the top of hurricanes. And this isn't really you know, relevant, or perhaps it's not relevant to hurricanes in general. I just thought this was pretty neat. And I thought I would, should share something that was actually very near and dear to my heart. I thought this was kind of neat. So there you go. Hurricanes, sun, they behave in similar ways. And so with that, I think we can wrap up this episode on Regalica Canes. And I want to thank you for allowing me the time to talk about my namesake back here, which again, I didn't name, but I decided to just embrace them. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Regalica Canes, because there is way more to learn, we will leave links to the papers in the description. Or if you're having trouble sleeping, they accomplish the same thing. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as I can. Until next time. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android. Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.